Mark chapter 5, verse 1. They came to the other side. You have to be able to see when God has you in a transitional space. You have to be able to see when God is moving you from one place to another place. A lot, a lot of y'all, this is the reason why you're uncomfortable right now is because you're not supposed to be comfortable in a temporary place. You're not supposed to get comfortable in a temporary place. God is he's transitioning you to a new place. And they came to the other side of the sea into the country of Garasenos. 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 I worked on that all morning, man. Garasenos. <laughs> into the country of Garasenos. When he, who is he? the chain breaker yeah got out of the boat immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him and he had his dwelling among the tombs lowercase he that that means we're talking about the man capital he means we're talking about the chain breaker are y'all with me okay I don't want y'all to get lost right here the chain breaker don't hang out with dead things And if he does, they only going to be dead for a moment. He had his dwelling among the tombs and no one was able to bind him anymore, even with chains. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains and the chains, pay attention because we're talking about the, the, we're talking about him. We're not talking about the chain breaker. We're talking about him. I need you to understand what's happening right here. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been torn apart by him. And the shackles broken into pieces. And no one was strong enough to subdue who is him. Who is him? When the Bible doesn't give you a name, it means insert your name here. I got some preachers on the front row that when, when, when the Bible doesn't when the Bible doesn't give you a name, when it says the woman at the well, that means when it says the woman with the issue of blood, that means and when it says the woman with the alabaster box, that means okay. When it says Judas, that means Judas. <laughs> Y'all with me? Everybody with me? When it says Matthew, that means Matthew. Okay. But when it says him, I mean me. I'm going to read about him just as well. No one was able to bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and he had tore them off him, broke them into pieces, because no one was strong enough to subdue your, your teachers, your mama, your grandma, your husband, I mean, uh, <laughs> constantly, day and night, he was screaming among the tombs and in the mountains and gashing himself with stones. Seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran up and bowed down before him, shouting with a loud voice. He said, what business do we have with each other? Jesus, son of the most high God. You ever notice how demons know who Jesus is and we don't? See, see, Pastor Kevin, I'm going to let y'all sit down. It's, it's revelation here. I need to share it with you. You see, later on, Peter would call Jesus the Christ. But the demon already identified Jesus as the... 
I implore you by God, do not torment me. For he had been the saying to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he was asking him, what is your name? Look at your neighbor and say, what is your name? name? This matters. And he said to him, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he began to implore him earnestly not to send him out to the countryside. Now there was a large herd of swine feeding nearby on the mountaintop. And the demons implored Jesus. They begged him saying, send us to the swine so we may enter them. And Jesus gave them permission. Coming out of the unclean and coming out, the unclean spirits entered into the swine, the herd, and rushed them down a steep bank into the sea. About 2,000 of them, and they were drowned in the sea. When the farmers heard about this, they ran away and reported it in the city and in the country. And the people came to see what happened. Nosy people. They came to see Jesus and observed the man who had been demon-possessed sitting down, clothed, and in his right mind. Look at your neighbor and say, are you in your right mind? The very man who had the legion, the very man who was a whoremonger, uh-oh, the very man who was a liar, the very man who cheated, the very man who... And they became frightened. Those who had seen it described to him, described to them how it had happened to the demon-possessed man and all about the swine, and they began to implore him to leave the region. And as he was getting into his boat, boy, this is good, man. The man who had been demon-possessed was begging him that he might accompany him, but Jesus did not let him. He said to him, go home. Go to your people and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in all of the capitalists what great things Jesus had done for him. And everybody was amazed. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, help me. Help them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. High five somebody and say, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. High five somebody else and say, I'm coming out. Every chain is broken. Every chain is broken. Amen. 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 Thank you guys for being at God Chasers Church today. Are y'all are y'all happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Everybody doing all right today? Y'all doing all right? Good. Can somebody turn this thing off right here? I'm sorry. I I tried to ignore it, but my hands are frosted. Man, like a fan or something on me. It's on super high power today, boy. It's on some other stuff. My fingers now. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Welcome to the house of the Lord today. Welcome to God Chasers Community Church. Listen, I, uh, today I, I came on assignment, man. I came on assignment. I'm here to help. I'm here to help today, man. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, hear me right here. I'm going to try not to be long, but if you got chicken in the oven... Go get it. It's good. I'm okay. I'll be okay. My self-esteem won't, won't go down. But today, I feel like there's somebody like this man in this room, and, and I came to let that person know that the chain breaker is on his way to you, and you might not clap. You might not be able to celebrate that, but that's all right. I'm thinking one or two people is expecting something today, is expecting God to do a miracle. One or two people have been waiting on the chain breaker to show up today, and I came to tell you that he on his way to you. But before I do that, <laughs> I want to give you a, a precursor to this particular story. Now, some of you guys know this story. You've heard this story before. You've heard it about, it, 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 about the demonic man. Um, some people call it the miracle of the swine. It, it is a popular story. We talk about it in the Bible. But I, and I want to talk about it too. But before I do, I want to sort of back you up. This is Mark chapter 5. But if you don't read Mark chapter 4, you, you, you'll have a, a misunderstanding of, about, this, about what's happening right here. So if we can back up to, to chapter 4, I'm not going to read it all for you um, like Prego, it's in there, but, but what I want you to do is be able to go back and read it for yourself, amen? Amen. If, if what I say is not provable, find another pastor. 
I want to help you right there. If what I say is not provable, if what I teach you here is not provable, you need another pastor. Amen? Amen. But as long as I'm saying what God says, stay in your seat. I mean, uh, <laughs> keep your letter. Amen? Stay connected to this body. Amen? Amen. So, so in, in Mark chapter 4, right about verse number 35, Jesus has a like an epiphany. He does this often. Everybody will be chilling and Jesus will just stand up. Everybody will be relaxing and Jesus will just sort of get up. See, that's why uh, people who are in authority, they don't have to uh, crowdsource for answers for their next step. Oh, what do y'all think I should do? I think I should move. What do y'all think I should? What do y'all think I should eat for dinner? What do y'all? Jesus don't crowdsource. He, he, just, he just gets up. Amen. Amen. And, and I love this because Jesus, he just stands up in the place and he says, let us go to the other side. Somebody say the other side. The other side. Now, if you if you are not paying attention, you will miss small things in the Bible because it's like Prego, it's in there. When he says, let's go to the other side, you have to understand the geography of where they are. So he is going from one place to another place. He is moving from one place place to another place. I, I thought I'd just help you with that because uh, it, sometimes there's going to be a, an issue when you have to move from one place to another place. Not, not just physically, spiritually. You're moving, some, some of y'all are in a transitional space. And, and, and so Jesus says, let's move from one place to the other place. He says, let's go to Gerasenos. Gerasenos. Now, Gerasenos means the place of the fighter. Man, the Bible's good. Gerasenos means the place of the fight. Now, they were in Capernaum, close to Jerusalem. That means the place of peace. I thought it was interesting that Jesus moved them from a place of peace to a place of fight. I thought it was interesting that Jesus moved them from a place of peace to a place where there was going to be a fight. In fact, he helped them out by saying, he said, I didn't, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. I came, I came for a fight. And what I'm telling you right now is if you're in a fight, you, you serve in the chain breaker. If you're in a spiritual fight, you're in the right place. The chain breaker is with you. My brother said, I... This, this, these grapes and wine are, are good, but it's time to get into a fight. I love that Jesus would go to a fight. In Luke chapter 4, we just, Luke chapter 4, remember the Bible said the Holy Spirit led him up into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. You think God is always trying to get you out of a fight, but some of y'all, God's trying to get you into one. So he can show himself strong. You don't get to be David if there is no Goliath. You don't get to be David if there's no giant. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't get to be Daniel if there's no lion. Okay? We want to be Daniel without the lion. So, 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 Jesus says, let's get up. Let's go to the place where the fight is. And as they get up and they go to the place, they get on the water and Jesus goes down into the bottom of the boat and goes to sleep. As they're riding out on the water, this is in Mark chapter 4. This is in Mark chapter 4. As they're riding out on the water, all of a sudden, a storm comes. <laughs> Look at your name and say, a storm's coming. I don't care who you are, where you are, what your situation is, your circumstance, a storm's coming. I don't care if you just got out of one. I don't care if you feel like you just got into one. If you in one right now, another one's coming. A storm's always coming. You got to know that you know that you know that a storm is coming. If I know that a storm is coming, then I know to get ready. Oh, y'all not ready. If I, if I know that a storm is coming, then I prepare for the storm that's on its way to me. Are y'all with me? So, so they, get it, they, they get in the boat and the storm starts coming and it starts beating against their ship. It starts beating against their ship. It starts beating against their ship. And all of a sudden, these men who were fishermen, courageous, know how to be out on the water. All of a sudden, they get scared. If you're scared, say you're scared. 
So they did just that. The Bible says they went down to the bottom of the boat. And they said, Jesus, care it's not that we perish in the sea. Jesus rolled over, stretched, went up to the top of the boat and said, peace, be still. The Bible says he rebuked the storm. I want to help you right here. Jesus is about to rebuke the storm in your life. You, gotta, you might have to endure it for a while, but you serve a God who... who Oh, the Bible says, what manner of man is this? That winds they obey, that the seas they obey, that all, all of a sudden Jesus shows up and the storm's got to back up. I just want to help you with this. When Jesus show up, your storm got to back up. Ever seen one of those movies when the hero show up? Everybody thought, it's good. <laughs> we don't want no trouble. When Bruce Leroy show up, everybody that's how the storm got to do but I want to I, I want to encourage you that that when you see the storm it is preparation for where you are about to go okay so Jesus Jesus had a mission he has something to accomplish but he couldn't accomplish it if the storm didn't come oh let me hear you every storm in your life you might want to write this down every storm in your life is for a season and for a reason Every storm in my life is for a season and a reason. It's, 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 it's either a storm of correction or it's a storm of perfection. Storm, storms of correction are meant to turn you around. Storms of perfection are meant to make you roll harder. And it's your job to identify your storm. Now, by no means should the storm frighten you. That's different. By no means it should make you do one or two things. If you're going in the wrong direction and the storm comes, turn around. <laughs> if you're going in the right direction, you know it. You measured it in your life. You're going in the right. You're doing everything you can. You're doing all the right things. you praying. you fasting. And then the storm comes, then it's just to make you stronger. Then it's just to make you stronger. Storms come for a reason and a season. And so they get into this place where the storm has come. I want you to know that your storm is a precursor to your healing. The storm is a precursor to your healing. God is about to do something in your life. And what he's doing, the storm is a setup. Hear me right here. Whenever you see, I love that we're in springtime right now. But whenever you see the storm, that means something's growing. You crying, something's growing. You worrying, something's growing. You, you, you all messed up, but something. Soon as you see drops, of, the, the Bible says, let, let some drops. If I, just had, if I just had a few drops, I, it reminds me that God is doing something in my life. The storm is necessary. Do y'all hear me? So, so, so the, the storm comes. Jesus gets out of the boat. He, I love this. I, when I was young, um, I took my first flight with my, with my dad and my brother, and we went to Houston. It was a quick little 45-minute boom. We get on the plane. Start going up. Start shaking. Start going a little crazy. You know, I'm like 11 trying to be tough, Corinne, but I look up at my dad like player. <laughs> you put us on this thing. I'm holding you accountable for what's going to happen. Players, this is your problem right here. This is not my problem to fix. <laughs> so I look at my dad and my dad is, he, 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 he's a little tense. He's a little tense. He's, a, he's human. He's a little tense. But he, he, he says something so encouraging to me that now that I fly, I mean, I fly all the time now. I fly all over the place. And that, but he, I still remember what he said to me during that time. He said this. He said this. It, it, it's going <laughs> to, I know y'all waiting on some real good wisdom. It might not sound wise, but it's. It's good. He said, when the plane starts shaking, look at the flight attendant. He said, if the flight attendant's not worried, you shouldn't be worried either. 
If the flight attendant is panicking, they go, they buckle in, they, they, they hold on to their seatbelt. You need to worry. But if they still passing out coffee and Coca-Cola, you don't need to worry. The flight attendant will tell you, oh, hear me right here. Jesus is my flight attendant. I look to him. Oh, Jesus. I look to him to see if I should worry. If he's not worried, if he's not tripping, I'm not tripping. So I look to Jesus. Okay, every time the plane starts shaking, every time my kids start acting crazy, every time my money looks funny, every time my chains look strange, every time me and my wife not getting along, I look to Jesus. If he's not tripping, I look to Jesus. Those disciples went down in that boat. They said, care it's not if we perish. You don't care that we're going to die. And some of y'all will laugh at those disciples, but that's how you pray. You don't care that we're going to lose our house, Jesus. You don't care that I'm going to lose my marriage. You don't, Jesus, I need you right here. I don't know what I'm going to do. And Jesus says, peace. Be still. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. I wondered if he was talking to the wind or he was talking to the disciples. I wondered if he was talking to the wind or he was talking to me. Because when things start shaking in my life, I tend to start moving. It's my natural reaction to try to fix something myself. And sometimes I think he's not talking to the wind. He's talking to Dante. And he said, peace, be still. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Be still and know that I am God. Peace. Still. All of a sudden, the wind was like, oh, we don't want none of that. I'm backing up. And they get to their destination safely. But I want you to know this. The storm is the precursor to your healing. We all know that these chapters and verses were put in the Bible to help us understand how to get to certain places. But this is not... This particular story is not the end of one story and the beginning of another story. It is a continuation of one long story. Are y'all with me? So when Jesus stands up and says, let's get in the boat, what he's standing up to say is that I know that there's somebody in Garaskinos, uh, Garasinos, I know that there's somebody over there who needs my healing, who needs my help, and nothing will stop me from getting, oh, you need to understand this, nothing will stop Jesus from getting to you. Nothing will stop Jesus from getting to your situation. He is on his way. He may not come when you want him, but he's always out. Somebody celebrate Jesus if you know nothing will stop him. No storm, no demon, no imp, no liar, no cheat. Nobody will stop your God getting to where you are. There's no demon in hell. To... He used to sing a little song that said, Ain't no devil in hell gonna walk on over Jesus and me. Y'all don't know. Y'all know. Y'all not churchy. So, so Jesus is on his way. I want to help somebody. He's on his way to you. He's on his way to where you are. I know you've been in chains. I know you've been in torment. I know you've been weeping and gnashing, beating yourself. Listen, listen. The Bible says that he would cut him cut himself and you say oh that sounds terrible PD but you do it all the time you say I'm not good enough I'm not smart enough I'm not pretty I wish I was as pretty as such and such I, my life would be better if I had this opportunity or I had this situation and what God is saying is you are more than enough you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus if you knew what was on the inside of you if you knew that the greater one was alive on the inside of you you wouldn't be cutting cutting yourself cutting yourself the Bible says he would hang out in tombs hang out around dead things some of us that's our problem 
we just hang out around dead things, dead people, dead situations. That relationship been dead. Y'all been broke up, back together, broke up, back together, broke up, back together. That relationship is dead. I come here in the name of Jesus to release you from some of that old stuff. See, some, Steve, sometimes I got to preach to my church. I can't just preach to it. I came to release you from your second Facebook account. I came to release you from the one you used to. Yeah, yeah, I came to release you from your second Instagram account. I came to release you from, I know, yeah, we could jump and shout and do this little dance, but if you're still doing the same thing, you are bound up. Came to release you from that from having to be in the mess, from having to be always around dead stuff, wanting to know all the, all the stuff that happened, wanting to know, oh, what he do to him, what she do to him, oh, did you hear what happened to someone? I release you from that in the name of Jesus. You bound, always in the midst of mess, your name come up, right in the center of it. You bound, I release you from it in Jesus' name. I release you from it in Jesus. I release you from it in Jesus. The chain breaker came to release you from that mess in Jesus' name. In relationships where people don't know who you are, they taking advantage of you. Oh. I want to say what I want to say, but I'm not going to say it. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No. It is. It is. That man don't know you till income tax season. <laughs> WYD. <laughs> Living my best life. Leave me alone. Back to the chain breaker. (laughs) Hear me right here, because some of y'all clapping and laughing like it's somebody else, and I'm talking to you. The chain breaker is here. Do you know who you are? You know how powerful you are? Why you keep succumbing to dead things? Dead situations. Dead. It's dead. Y'all tried to resurrect it a hundred times. That friendship is dead. It's, it's de- <laughs> Abraham told Lot, which way are you going to go? <laughs> it's not complicated. Which way are you going to go? Oh, you going that way? Okay, God bless you. May the Lord watch between me and... While we're absent one from another. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus shows up. Uh, Come on, come back, come back, come back. Jesus shows up, and he shows up after the storm. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. He shows up after the storm, and he shows up to this place. Uh, Garasinos. I'm still working on this. Garasinos. He shows up to Garasinos, and, and he steps off the boat, and he is greeted by this man. This man who has been cutting himself, this man who can't be bound, who can't be chained, who won't be disciplined. Oh, hear me right here because this might help you. Yo, yo, I won't be disciplined. Don't, don't have the discipline to finish school. Don't have the discipline to stay in a relationship. Don't have the discipline to stay in a marriage. Don't have the discipline to keep your mouth sh- to tune to KYMS. This is what your radio station needs to be tuned to. Keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Always got to say something back. Always got to rebuttal. Always have something to say. I, 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 you need to see yourself in this man. The Bible says he couldn't be chained up. He couldn't be bound. And, and we say, okay, well, we don't want him to be bound. Right? But I, I need 
need you to understand that it was not the external change that Jesus was worried about it's the internal change some of y'all you don't have external change to worry about you've broken every external chain it's the internal chain in fact it's the invisible chains it's the invisible chains that God came to defeat see depression is an invisible chain anger is an invisible chain Lying is an invisible chain. These are not visible chains. These are invisible chains. And the chain breaker said, no, you've done a good job dressing it all up. You've done a good job showing everybody, oh, I'm not bound. I'm cute. I didn't know till I had a church, Pastor Woods, that is cute people with chains. <laughs> Ugly people with chains. Rich people with chains, poor people with chains, black people with chains, white people with chains. Everybody's got chains. Everybody's got chains. That's why the Bible said you got to work out your own self-salvation. Everybody's got chains. And you've, doing a, you've done a good job looking cute. Let me hear, I'm here to tell you, God chases, we got some of the best, y'all the cutest, ooh we. We got some of the best ones. But I'm also going to tell you, it's some internal chains that everybody can't see, that's keeping you bound, that's keeping you on the level you own, and you keep wondering why you can't go forward. It's not, it's not the physical chain, it's that in invisible chain, and it's keeping you on the same level, and God keeps saying, I got a new thing for you. I got a new situation for you, but you can't get there because they're invisible. The chains nobody don't know about. Chains you can hide behind Mac Gliblosk. The chain, the chain, the chains, the chains, the chains, the chains, the chains that nobody sees. The chains that started with something somebody said to you in the fifth grade or the sixth grade and you're still holding on to it. You still got the same, you, the, the chains that you haven't been able to escape. Years have passed. Years have passed. The chain from your first boyfriend. The chain from your last divorce. And you've done a good job, God chasers. Hear my heart. You so cute. Chained up. The chain from your last church. And the reason you can't trust nobody, because somebody did you wrong back there, and you can't, you, then you're, oh, PD just taking advantage of me. He just won't. No, no, no. You in chains, baby. You in chains. 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 And I don't want to just talk about chains. Uh, uh, a lot of times we talk in here, but I, 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 I know who I pastor, amen? I know who I pastor. And in, there, in, in, in the best church, it's, it's two-thirds women and one-third men. And so a lot of you men will sit in here and act like, oh, this is for the women. No, but it's chains, it's chains, it's chains on your computer screen. Yeah, it's chains, it's chains in your, in your Chrome browser. It's chains in Internet Explorer. Listen, it's, it's, it's chains that, that every time something go wrong, you got to stand up and yell. Let me help you right here. Kings don't yell. They don't have to. They're the king. I don't need to yell, I'm the king. I say a thing, and it happens, because I'm the king. Don't, 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 wait, don't clap, don't clap. I was a prince for a long time. <laughs> Hear me right here. It chains. Chains, you told yourself, this is as far as I can go. This is my mental capacity. This is what I, this is the only thing I can do. This is chains, chains, chains are holding on to me. The Bible said he would be bound up by chains and he would break the external chains. Some of y'all got more degrees than a thermometer. 
You got money. You, 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 you've been able to present a picture. But God said, no, no, no. I came to break the chains. See, it's the chains that nobody knows about. The Bible says he was isolated. Isolation in itself is a chain. Some of y'all got chains of isolation. That's why y'all speed out of this parking lot. So you don't want to hug. You don't want to meet nobody. You've been going here for three years. You don't know nobody in this room. Chains. I don't trust anybody. Chains. And you think you're free from relationships, but really you chain to distrust. Chains. Chains. Chains of lying. You don't know how to not lie. You be thinking, that, trust me, here, I'm preaching to you something I know. You be thinking, why did I lie? I don't got nothing to prove to them. I could have just told the truth. But you can't. You chain. Chains. The Bible said he would cry in a tomb all night long. And, the, and some of y'all been crying in a tomb and nobody's heard you. You've been crying. You've been wailing. Nobody's heard you because you disconnected from everybody. And you keep saying, why me, Lord? Why me, Lord? And God says, no, no, I, 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 I got the chain. I got the chain breaker. And he's on his way to you. Jesus shows up. And the second he gets out of the boat, the man meets him where he is. <laughs> Pastor Kevin, I'm, I'm confused about this. Because how would the man know that Jesus was on his way to that place. How would he know that? How would he know that? I'm, the Bible never tells us. How, why, why did he have the GPS coordinates to where Jesus was? How did he know that? And I love that the, when the Bible is silent, it gives us room to speculate. Because who knows who sent him to that place? Some of y'all don't know how you got to 13032 Nacogdoches. You have no context for how you got here, but when you got here, the chain breaker was here. Some of y'all don't know how you got connected with this church or got connected with the pastor. The truth is, whoever invited you, don't go here no more. God, no one comes to the Father unless he is... God is drawing you to a place. He is drawing you to him. And you keep wondering, God, when are you going to help me? When are you going to break the chains? And God says, I keep drawing you to me. If you're paying attention, if you're listening, I'm drawing you to myself. But you got to trust God enough to take a step. Got to trust him enough to take a step. Trust him enough to come. Uh, uh, another story about the water. That Peter was in a boat with everybody else and Jesus was walking on the water. Peter, Peter said, Jesus, if, it's the, if that's you, call me out. Call me to come to you. Bid me to come to you. And Jesus said, come. Peter got out of the boat and started to walk on the water. This is one of my favorite stories in the whole Bible. Uh, Peter started to walk on the water. He wasn't walking on the water. He was walking on the word. The word was come. The word was come here, here. Here it goes. I want to help you right now. God is ready to break your chains, but he's giving you a word. And until you walk out the word that he's given you, you're going to keep bearing the same chains. The word is come. draw nigh unto me. Come, 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 get closer to me. Sure. You know me. You've had relationship with sure. Amen. Come, come closer. Come closer. Listen, you cannot exhaust your relationship with God. There are more layers. It's more to know. You gotta come. This man shows up at the beach just as Jesus is getting out of the boat. And I loved it. I'm done. I love this. He says, the Bible says he falls down on his knees. He lifts up his hands. And he starts to cry out. Wait, he falls down on his knees. He lifts up his hands. And then he starts to cry out. Wait, wait, wait. He falls down on his knees. 
he lifts up his hands, and then he starts to cry out. This looks familiar. He falls down on his knees. He lifts up his hands, and then he starts to cry out. This looks like worship. He falls down on his knees. He lifts up his hands. He starts to cry out. Uh, 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 let me help you right here. When the chain breaker shows up, you got to recognize that he's there. You got to honor him for who he is. You got to learn how to fall down on your knees. I know no other chain has bound you. I know you've been able to bro break out of a lot of stuff, but here's the place where I need you to get this. When you learn how to get down on your knees, and lift your hands and say, Jesus, I haven't figured it all out. Jesus, I don't know what else to do. I don't know where else to go. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need help. I've tried my best. I've tried to figure it out on my own. I've tried to work it out on my own. Jesus, I need you. When I get to that place, where I can cry out to the Father. When I get to that place where I can cry out. Some of y'all haven't seen, you haven't seen Jesus be God in your life because you haven't recognized him as God in your life. See, see, Jesus works like this. Either he is Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. Either he's Lord of all or he's not Lord at all. What's that mean? That means I can't keep the chains I want and give him the chains I don't. I can't keep the stuff that I want to keep. I, 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 wanna, I, I don't want to smoke no more, but I, I want to keep being a whore. I'm talking to my church. I don't want to lie no more, but I want to keep backstabbing. God said, no, 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 either I'm Lord of all or I'm not Lord at all. And until you can find a place down on your knees, and sometimes that's what the storm is there for. Oh, y'all thought I forgot about the storm? No, I did not. The storm is there to push you to a place where you got to get down in the boat to see Jesus. The storm is there. I love that. Wait, 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 wait. The storm didn't make them go up. Jesus wasn't up. He was down. The storm has to put you in such a place where you can't see nothing else but the ground. Where you can't see nothing else but the ground. And that's when you say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need you. The storm put them low. And the storm that that man had been going through not the, not the visible, the invisible, pushed him to a place that as soon as he saw Jesus on the boat, he bowed down, lifted up his hands and began to cry out. Some of y'all, this is your season. This is your bow down. Lift up your hands and cry out season. The truth is you tried it your way. This is your bow down. Lift up your hands and cry out. See, the truth is you tried to do it on your own. This is your bow down. Lift up your hands and cry out, season. God said, this is the place. This is the place where I'll meet you. This is the place where your chains get broken. It is through a real relationship with me, not a relationship with church. See, it's religion, not relationship. Excuse me, it's religion, not relationship, that keeps us bound. But it's relationship, not religion, that sets us free. I don't want a religion. I don't want a cross, a, 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 a crucifix. I don't want three Hail Marys. I want a relationship with the Almighty Father. I want to get down on my knees and lift my hands and say, Son of God, help me. Son of God, heal me. Son of God, fix me. Son of God, change me. I tried by myself. I tried cold turkey. I tried quitting myself. But the Son of God, I need you to break the chains that are on my life. People can't see, but you can. People don't know, but you know. Break the chains. The Bible says that once this man was healed, I... First, I need to give you this. The Bible says that the demons that were inside of him, 
Jesus, they asked Jesus permission to leave him. But get this, they, they said, they said, can we, don't, don't make us leave this place. We'll leave this person, but don't make us leave this place. See, that's why there's demonic spirits still in your family. Because they left the person but not the place. That's why they're still with your sisters and brothers. They left the person but not the place. And if you're not careful, they'll get back in. They left the person but not the place. There's a propensity for you. Oh, hear me right here. There's a propensity for you to do what your mama did. Because they left the person but not the place. She's healed but her demon stayed in the region. Your daddy's healed, but his demon stayed in the... See, see, demons are regional. You got to know that. There's climates that cover cities. There's climates that cover spaces. And what, and, and, and what Jesus did was so... He said, yes, I need you to leave the, the man. But he didn't make him leave the municipality. Those demons went up into some pigs. <laughs> the demons went up into some pigs. And the pigs ran off. As soon as the demons went in them, they ran off the side of a cliff and, and into the ocean and killed themselves. Hear me right here. There's some demons that were meant to kill you, but you were so strong. If they would have stayed in you, they would have killed you were so strong. There's some demons that, that, that God has healed you from that would kill some other people. There's some demons that God has healed you from that would have killed some other people. But God spared your life. He set you free. He set you free. The Bible says that those demons went into those pigs and the pigs died. And then they call this, if you read it in your Bible, they call this, they title this, the miracle of the swine. And I was like, well, God, that's, that's mistitled. Because the miracle was not what you did with the swine, it was what you did with the man. And then God said, exactly. He said, the man was the swine. He said, but I healed him, and I cleaned him up, and I fixed him. He thought he was the swine. He would cut on himself. He thought he wasn't good enough. He thought he wasn't pretty enough. He thought he wasn't. And God said, no, 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 I chose you. I chose you. So the miracle was for somebody who wasn't worthy. I, I dare you right now to praise God for a miracle that you weren't worthy to get, that you weren't worthy to receive. The miracle was for me. The miracle was for me. Last thing. Last thing. The Bible says that the people came to see this man in his right mind. Clothed in his right mind. They came to see change. See, people are going to see the change that's happening in your life. I, I want you to understand this. Because when God does it in your life, he does it for a reason. So that somebody else can see the goodness of the Lord. Somebody else can see the goodness on you. Girl, if you knew who I used to be, if you knew what I used to do, if you knew the type of person I used to be, but I, I'm no longer bound both visible and invisible chains have fallen off my life and it was only because the chain breaker showed up it wasn't me at all it was the chain breaker the bible says when the people showed up the man was sitting in his seat clothing in his right mind i i just i just love when people who knew you show up to this church see you in your seat clothed and in your right mind 
Oh, you thought I was supposed to be hurt, boo-boo. You thought I was supposed to be dead. You thought my life was over, but I'm seated in heavenly places. I'm doing what God taught me to do. So, 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 get this, get this, get this. So the man said, okay, I'm healed, I'm, hel I I'm healthy, I'm better, I'm blessed. So the Jesus left. Wait. He came all the way over there, all the way across the sea, through toils, through trials, through oceans beating against his boat, through the storm and the rain. He came all the way over there to save one person. He came all the way over there. Some of y'all didn't, ooh, y'all didn't get that. Because the truth is, if he did it for that man, he'll do it for me. He'll come across oceans. He'll come across seas. He'll come, he'll come see about his baby. He'll come see about me. In fact, he made a decision. He stood up when everybody was chilling. And he said, I gotta go see about Kevin. I gotta go see about Mo. I gotta go see about Carrie. I gotta get up from here. I gotta go see about Roxanne. I gotta go see about Karen. The Bible says after he healed this man, he got back in the boat. He didn't start a church. He didn't do a running Bible study. No, 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 I came here for the one. I left the 99. So the man said, well, I'm healed. I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready to be the 12th disciple. The 13th disciple put me in. Put me in. He put his foot in the boat. Jesus said, whoa, 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 wait, wait, no, no, no. No, no, no. I need you here. Oh, wait. He said, I need you here. I need you here. I need y'all to get this last point. I need y'all to get. He said, I need you here. He said, I need you here. You can't leave. And you said, wait, wait, no, Jesus. I want to be seated with you in heavenly places. I want to be crying at the altar. I want to be here singing, holy, holy, hallelujah is the Lord of God. He said, no, no, no. How will they know? How will they know unless you go back changed? How will they know? How will they know unless you go back different? They need to see, they need to see the new you. See, because they saw you do all that old stuff. They need to see the new you. They need to see the you that's changed, the you that's different. That's why you can't let go of everybody. Oh, hear me right here. That's why you can't abandon your whole family. No, they need to see you at Thanksgiving talking about, okay, everybody, let's say grace now. They need to see you at the games. They need to see you at the sporting event. And my problem with, oftentimes with new Christians is that they just want to sleep at the altar. But no, he said, go ye there forth and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And lo, I'm with you there. You want to go where I am, but I'll go where you go. And wherever you place your foot, it'll be blessed. I need you to hear me right here. God, you... Your, your, your friends, your neighbors, your sisters, your cousins, your brothers, they need to see you being saved. They need to see you happy. They need to see you, see you living a saved life. All they know is the club. Hear me right here. Jesus said, I'm going to send you back. Not only am I going to send you back to the city you came from, but I'm going to send you to Decapolis. Decapolis is 10 cities. Decapolis is not one city. He says, he says, he says I'm going to send you back to 10 cities. You think people knew you before. 
You think you have clout before. You think you have popularity before. I'm going to send you back to 10 cities and everybody's going to know what I did through you. Everybody's going to say, no, no, no. I remember the old Chisa. Everybody's going to say, no, no, no. I remember the old Adriana. And you're going to say, yeah, but I'm different. The chain breaker changed my life. I'm going to send you to 10 cities. But some of y'all, you, you're not supposed to go back to your job and tell people about Jesus. You're supposed to start 10 businesses. <laughs> you're supposed to have 10 streams of income. You're supposed to go back 10. You're supposed to go back and be 10 times greater than you were. See, I, God didn't just save me for me to sit in my corner. God saved me for me to throw my rock. God delivered me so I can throw my rock. I'm asking you, if you really changed, I'm asking you to go tell somebody. See, we do these stuff, we do these things. I, I know, y'all, we, we way over time, I'm sorry. But I'm helping, I, I gotta help. We do all this stuff, you know, we do, we do stuff. We, we have merchandise and all this. We do all this stuff. It's not for y'all. It's for Decapolis. <laughs> it's so that you can go and tell somebody. I, 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 I love my church. I love, my, I love what God is doing in my life. I love how God is changing my life. If you want to have change in your life, maybe you should do what I'm doing. But if you don't have chains, if you don't have change, it's probably because you have chains. And you can't encourage anybody to do what you're doing <laughs> until there's a noticeable freedom in you. Be free today. Be free today. Be free today. Be free today. The chain breaker. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. Listen, if you don't know, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, like you never, you never like truly accepted him in your life give you an opportunity to meet him today and we're going to say a prayer and it's going to sound super simple but the truth is it, it is the Bible says once you accept that Jesus Christ is Lord you believe it in your heart you confess it with your mouth then he will come into your life and you will be saved that's it you don't have to do anything oh don't get me started you, you, you don't have to prove to anybody you're saved in your heart and the chains will be broken it starts with you accepting your Lord and Savior if that's you today we're going to say a prayer everybody's going to say it so nobody feels alone but I believe I believe hear me right here that if you say it the chains are going to break today things that used to have you bound things that used to hold on to you I believe you're going to drop them you're going to put them down today and you're going to move into what God has for you if that's you on today repeat this prayer after me say Lord Jesus Please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Come into my life. Change my life. Father, today I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Break chains in my life. I want to be different. I want to be new. I want to be like you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, if you said that prayer, if you said that prayer for the first time or you believed it for the first time, I'm going to count to three. And when I get to three, I'm going to ask you to take one more step of faith and just raise your hand as high as you can raise it to signify that you accepted the Lord Jesus as your Savior today. One, it doesn't matter how you got here. It doesn't matter how you, no one comes to the Father unless he is drawn. Two, we believe today that your life can change by a simple prayer said at one time in one day, if you believe it, raise your hand three as high as you can. Somebody's coming to pray with you. Somebody's coming.